because of the shadow of your finger. Hello. <laughs> We're just being our normal selves. Good morning. Welcome to Friday. Um, all right. I apologize. I have something in my eye and it's making me crazy right now. I don't think anybody's even watching, so it's totally fine. Oh, it takes a second on the computer. All right, anyway, we're gonna get started. Sorry for all the nonsense. Um, so, hi, thank you. Um, the camera is facing me today, so I am trying to look in the right direction, and I know that I'm backwards, but um, it's okay, it's totally good. So, a couple quick things to go over, and then we're gonna talk all about cork today. Um, as soon as I get whatever is in my eye. Oh, thank you, Diana. <laughs> Um, I am seeing the comments, um, but Barb is here, so once I get talking and I can't answer any more of your questions, she's going to uh, check those. We're trying on the computer if it wants to uh, cooperate, and she will let me know if you guys have any questions about the cork or anything else. So, um, when uh, before I get started, if you would, if you haven't already, like the page, follow the page, and if you want to share the video, um, please do. Um, other than that, let's see. Oh, I wanted to thank everybody that's been subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much for that. I think I'm up to 41 subscribers. Um, I know that probably doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, but it makes me really happy. So I'm glad you guys are liking the videos. Um, let's see. Oh, I had asked you guys, um, yesterday. I'm sorry, I keep looking in the wrong direction. I'm trying to look this way so I can see all of you. Um, I had asked you guys to bring your show and tell. I thought that since every week I get to show you what I'm working on and you get to see what I'm doing, I'd like to see what you're working on. So don't worry if it's not my pattern, don't worry if it's not even a bag. Um, if you are working in a quilt or you're knitting a blanket or you baked a cake, you know, post a picture in the comments so we can all see. It's always nice to uh, get a little pat on the back when you do something. So uh, you can post them every week. Um, you can post them if it's my pattern, if you wanna post it right on the page. Otherwise, just add it right to the comments. I see more people coming in. Hello. Um, are you getting it on the computer? No. Okay. <laughs> Try refreshing up at the top and see if that works. All right. Barb's, um, we're having more technical okay. difficulties. It's the story of our life. Um, let's see here. So the only new thing that came in since last week is a replenishment. This right here. The uh, Tulip Pink in the Cotton Candy, the, I forget what it's called, uh, Fairy Dust. So that's on the website if you are interested in that. And other than that, we didn't get any new stuff, but I made some new things, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, let's see here. I'm going through my list, so I make sure I don't forget anything. Okay, we are going to talk about cork today, but before we talk about the cork, um, I wanted to just touch base on two things, kind of unrelated to cork in general, but just um, pattern, kind of pattern how-tos. So the first one was about the recommended supplies on patterns. Every so often I'll get an email or a message about something in a pattern that doesn't seem to be going the way that somebody wants it to go. Maybe um, they have a hardware issue or something that isn't quite right. Um, we good? Trying to hit the mute button. Oh, I'll mute here. It. I'll, I'll be right back. Um, the volume is right there. Hit it up. There we go. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> um, so whenever you are using one of my patterns in particular, and again, I can only speak for myself. Um, whenever you're using one of them, if it tells you what to use in the pattern, and you know I love decor bond, and if I need anything extra, I will use fusible fleece. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for the different layers. There's a reason for how I do things. Um, and the reason is usually to do with sewing um, through the different layers or adding hardware. If you want to deviate from what I've suggested and use your own you know, supplies, if you want to use a different kind of interfacing or skip it, just please keep in mind that that's going to affect the outcome of the bag. It's not gonna be the same as mine. If it has hardware on it, like some of the hardware that we talked about last week, like the strap anchors, you need the stability. So I do what I do for a reason. Um, if you're just trying to make a bag softer or firmer and it doesn't have hardware that's going to be affected by it, then absolutely play with interfacings. 
But if you're ever unsure of something or why I've recommended something, don't hesitate to email me. I do answer all the emails. So that was just one thing I just want to touch base on. And the other one, um, oh, good morning, Janet. Uh, hi, Tracy. Good morning, or maybe it's afternoon. Tracy, I have no idea. What, I don't even know what day it is anymore. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is um, a very sweet woman named Peggy yesterday had emailed me. I don't know if she's on Facebook. I don't know if she's watching. If you are, hi, Peggy. Um, but she had emailed me and she had a couple questions. We were going through one of the patterns, um, some of the things that, you know, that weren't clear to her and she was trying to work on her top stitching and top stitching. I know is one of those things that can be kind of, um, hi Judy, um, that can be kind of touch and go. Sometimes your machine isn't cooperating. Sometimes you're not loving your thread choice. So we were just kind of talking about top stitching and I was giving her some tips. And she ended up writing me back at the end of the day and she said to me that she had worked out some of the issues she was having with her machine. She got it all set. And what she did is she changed one of the patterns. She was working on the mini diva wallet, um, which is exactly that. It's a small version of the diva. So it has a zippered pocket on one side, card pockets on the other, and then the zippered pocket on the outside. And what she did to make it easier for her, cause she was having issues with top stitching, is she moved the pockets around you have three Abbies ready to make. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. This is why the camera's not facing me because I get distracted by comments. I'm going to ignore you guys and Barb's just going to tell me if I need to, if I need to comment. She's um, got three Abby swings. But what, <laughs> I know I can't wait to see them. But what she had said to me, and it was such a sweet way of saying this. And I just wanted to kind of tell all of you this is she said, I know that designers don't like when people take liberties with their patterns and change them. And I just wanted to tell you exactly what I told her and she apologized for it don't apologize for that when I write a pattern and again I'm speaking for me I don't know what other designers and how they feel about this when I write a pattern I am writing it so that you at home that is new to bag making or you who like it exactly as is you can make it exactly as is it's got all the components you like and you just work start to finish in that pattern and you get it done but also if you're a bag maker or you look at a bag and you're like I like it but I wish it had another zippered pocket or I wish it had a different handle style. I don't care if you change that. I want you to do that because it means that you're learning from me and it means that you're taking the liberty to make something into your own. When we go to a, into a store, we can't do that. We can't walk into Macy's and buy a purse and then ask them to change it. But when you buy a pattern, you can make it however you want. So again, I speak for me only. If you want to do something and be creative with it, by all means do it. And let me know. I love to see what you guys do when you change things up to make it work for you. So Peggy, if you're watching, you did an awesome job. Um, I hope you're watching and you'll post your wallet on the show and tell. Uh, but you know guys do make the bags yours. That's absolutely what what they're there for So am I looking in the right direction? Can you see me? Okay, I'm making eye contact <laughs> Barb is nodding by me. She's following everything. Okay, so <laughs> If any of you were around last night watching the log cabin uh, <laughs> the Log cabin video, you know that I can't just talk I have to talk to whoever is behind the camera that you can't see and I do crack myself up. That's one of my gifts. So before we talk about cork, <laughs> I'm 40 now. That's what my shirt says. Um, thanks to my sister. So I can do whatever I want. Um, I have some new kits. So Judy, you asked for it. I have it for you. So I'm going to show you, I have two new kits and I have another sample, um, that I don't have a kit for, but I can tell you where to get the fabric. So I think it was, Karen Netherton, I hope I said your last name right, who after the first Facebook Live sent me a picture and said, these are some of the bags from your patterns I made. And she showed me my getaway bag. Yes, I know it's backwards. But she showed me, um, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm distracted again. She, Janet, I don't know how I feel about being 40. It sounds weird. I'm excited, but I'm also, it's weird. So anyway, I'm not looking at comments. So um, Karen had showed me a picture of her getaway bag and it made me remember this awesome pattern that I haven't promoted or made a new sample for in a long time. And I said, okay, it's time. It's time to redo this one. All of my patterns have this kind of the bar at the bottom of color and the logo, and they have a different look. Getaway was one of the ones like the trio. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Karen. It was you, um, who had bleh. This is why I can't read comments. Stop reading. <laughs> I'm not allowed to read anymore. Um, so I'm not reading. I'm covering you guys up. So 
I wanted this pattern to look like all the other ones. I wanted the cover to be the same. I wanted the font inside to be the same, but I also wanted to include information about cork and I wanted to um, just to add some extra pictures because it was one of my older patterns. It was from 2012. That was all line drawings and I've since added photos. So I wanted to go back in and kind of refresh that pattern. So just like I told you guys, uh, however many weeks ago it was now, that um, you could, yes, Shirley, I know it's backwards, backwards on the screen, unfortunately. It's because the camera's facing me. Um, that's why I'm backwards and that's backwards. So, um, but that's okay. We're gonna, it won't bother you anymore today because <laughs> there's nothing else with writing. Um, I wanted to kind of refresh that pattern and so if you already have the pattern just like I told you with the trio on our first Facebook live just send me an email with some kind of you know proof that you have it and I will email you a copy if you're placing an order um, you can tell me that you want a paper copy just let me know that you have the pattern and Barb has a question why are your patterns only in black and white Janet wants to know my patterns okay that's a great question and I I will tell you why because I sell my patterns to quilt shops and I also sell my patterns as PDFs on my website, there's a couple reasons why they are in black and white. Number one, I personally find color can be distracting um, when you're trying to look at a picture. Black and white makes it simpler. When I am printing them, if I do PDFs as color and then my local quilt shops or whatever quilt shops are selling them have them in black and white, it's not fair to them because that means that they're going to have something different than what you guys download. Why would you ever go to a shop if you know that you can get the pattern and color on my website? So I chose a long time ago. Um, it's partly for money, but it's also for printing for you at home. I chose to do them in black and white. It's something I've never changed and I'm sorry, but it's not something I'm going to change. Um, but this is also why I add some video tutorials and some other blog tutorials. It's just one of those things that I've done. Um, I use a local printer. I don't use, some of the pattern designers send their things out to like bigger um, printing companies. I use a local printer and it's easier and quicker for them to do things in black and white. So that's why I stick with the black and white. Um, it's just, there's a, a lot of things, but it mostly has to do with the fact that I sell PDFs and printed copies. And then also now doing shows over the past few years, going to shows and having um, patterns on display. It was just gonna be too much to have color everything and so I apologize if it's a decision that you don't like but it's just something that I've always done and it seems to work fine so Janet says okay that's why I that's why I have colored markers <laughs> that's exactly why you have colored markers I see that I knew that 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 you had those so that's why so um I think that's gonna be it on the pattern but I have kits because you guys love kits and you're making me love kits um because it's actually I was just telling Barb <laughs> I was telling Barb this morning she's making faces at me that um I have been loving that you guys like kits because what it's doing is making me remake samples it's making me use stuff that's in the office because you can only see what's behind me what you can't see is what's behind the camera um, we don't have any more room here and every time I buy something um, Barb makes faces at me because <laughs> we don't have any room we need more bins we need more bins we need we more, more we need like 20 foot ceilings and double the size of this office hopefully someday we'll move and we'll find a great spot for right now we're running out of room <laughs> so I'm trying to use fabric that we have so let me show you the kits number one this was the one that I posted yesterday so let's hold that one up so that is the Anna Maria Horner fabric with the medium blue green cork. This is the new teal zipper with silver and inside it's bright, really, really bright. So nice. Um, this is from Gypsy. It's not even lime green. It's like chartreuse. It's a really, really bright, bright green that I thought looked pretty with some of the colors in the background here. So this is a kit um, that comes complete. You can do it with or without the pattern like we've been doing. Kit number two is right here because it's all about brights. This is the one that we said looked like a, uh, a highlighter. Gorgeous. <laughs> Thank Diane you. Gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> and this right here is the pink confetti. So it's called pink confetti, but it's like a pinky purple. This is the orchid colored zipper and it works so nicely with that. 
I think when I was in California, somebody picked out this combination to make something, and I was like, okay, I need to absolutely get on board with that. So it goes really nice. This has the brass and the donut poles. And then inside is also bright. It's coral, and this is from Juniper. And if you aren't familiar with this bag, if you're newer to me and this is brand new to you, I just want to show you this bag is enormous. It holds so much stuff. It has big divided pockets on both sides. It has zippered pockets on both sides. Um, quick little story about this bag and then we're going to talk about cork in a minute here. Um, that was the bag that I used to take every time I went to teach a class. And in the very beginning, I was very much opposed to writing it as a pattern because I always wrote very, very simple box corners, easy peasy, um, it's the getaway bag. That doesn't, I don't know why I'm showing you that. Getaway extra large tote. Um, it's on the website. I didn't want to write the pattern because it seemed so complicated to me. I had not done anything up to that date and I had really only been doing patterns for about a year that had all these pockets, zippers, all this stuff going on. It was big and I just wasn't sure if I wanted to do it and then people just kept saying what's that bag you're carrying can you do a pattern and I finally did and it was a great seller and the only reason I haven't promoted it is because other new things have come along and I wanted to add the cork to it um, so yes we have questions Patricia wants to know she would like to add feet to the bottom how would you do that um, if you wanted to add feet to the bottom this bag it's actually it's assembled it's a little bit similar, but also very different from any of the other bags I've done. It has the outside is one unit, the lining is one unit, and this zipper top. So once you got this part done, the outside, I would probably then add the feet on the bottom. It's a big bag, so I'd probably do, what do we do, packs of eight? Eight. I would probably do like at least six to eight feet on this because it's, it's like eight inches wide. It's really, um, it's really long here. I think the bag itself is about 20 inches across on it is it's 20 inches wide so you could very easily do that and then continue on with your assembly um, from there adding the top and the lining so that would be an easy one I have one more I want to show you one question was yes. uh, Nancy wants to know would you consider having create your own kit allowing choice of options um yeah actually so here's the thing with that the only downfall of that is because we have so many different options like we what do we have 20 colors of zippers or oh something gosh. like that yes like, <laughs> i hang myself with zippers at night <laughs> i hope you guys didn't hear that but you probably did um barb's being a little saucy today so <laughs> god we need to get out of the house we need to leave um I will consider and see if there's like an easy way that we can do that. But I think the last time I counted, I think we have around 20 colors of zippers. We have like 70 colors of cork. It might have to be something that's a little bit more limited in, um, you know, like option one, two, and three, and you can pick a couple things. But the other thing is, and I'll talk about this more when we start talking about cork. I base every pattern of mine around the sizes of cork that we sell. I base it around the zippers that we sell. I base it around the things we have. So if you decided, I want to make a getaway bag, but I want to use different fabric, I want to change the lining, I want to use a different color cork, it's actually quite easy to do that because we already have that stuff kind of done and easy to, um, to work out. But let me think about that and see how we can make that work. You have another question for me? No. Oh, okay. Um, and let me show you this one. This is the one that's on the cover. Pretty. Isn't that beautiful? So if you watched Log Habit's video yesterday or um, last week, um, Log Habit is my local shop that I do social media for. I'm now the social media manager as I dubbed myself yesterday. Um, I, you can give yourself whatever title you want, I was told. Um, if you watch that or you were interested, this is their fabric that I got from them. It's a hummingbird fabric and the inside is also their fabric that I got. It's um, Lewis and Irene, I think is the name of the company. Yes, um, that there's something I saw a while ago at a show and I don't see them advertised a lot. They're a small company. I wanna say based out of England, I could be totally wrong on that. But if you are interested in any of these fabrics or doing this, 
I will link a picture of this and I will put their information in the comments um, or in a post after the video today. So if you want any of that information, that will be there. And that is it for getaway bags. Okay. Everybody loves that one. It's so pretty. How can you not? Um, but it doesn't belong to me. I have to give it back now. <laughs> so, all right. So now we're going to talk about cork. And I brought with me, I have lots of cork in front of me. And I want to just kind of go over um, some of the ins and outs of what cork is. I know some of you still haven't worked with it. Some of you have. I'm going to give you information. If you have questions, uh, Barb is reading them to me. So if you have anything that you want to know that I didn't cover, if you want to see something again, uh, go ahead and comment or ask. And they're located in Rockford, oh, South Carolina. See, I told you I was wrong. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like they were from England. Maybe Lewis and Irene sounds English. I, I don't know. I haven't gotten out of the house a lot. It doesn't? It does do not. Oh, but no. they're not. No, they're from South Carolina. Karen knew. Okay, so. Oh, well, I think that's where I saw them. Yes, sorry, side conversation. Okay, I'm focused, I'm talking to you. So let's talk about cork. First of all, um, and you guys have seen, I talk about cork a lot. It's on a lot of the bags, it's in the kits. We sell a ton of it. But what is it? I get a lot of questions, not as much anymore, because we've had it for, I want to say about four years or so now. So cork is not brand new anymore, but it's still very new to people. So what I have noticed over the years of doing quilt shows is in the very beginning when I first started selling cork, I got a lot of, what is this? They would touch it. They would ask, is it vinyl? Is it leather? What is this? What do you do with this? And when I would say cork, then they go, but what do you use cork for? I found that over the course of the last few years that I get a lot more of, oh, you have cork or, oh, look at the bags you've made and not as much, what is this? But in case you didn't know, let's go over what it is. Uh, it is actual cork. I get that question a lot. People don't think that it's real cork. When I first saw it, I saw it on Instagram. Um, this person that I follow out of Canada, she makes these gorgeous, gorgeous bags and she kept talking about... I use cork on this, I use cork leather, and I just thought that it was a vinyl. I thought that it was something that was printed to look like cork, because in the beginning, this was all that you saw, was the stuff that actually just looked like cork. There wasn't a lot of colors. Um, there wasn't a lot of prints and textures. It was new for us here. So I did not think that it was actual cork either, and so I messaged her and I said, what is this stuff that you're using? Why do you call it cork and what is it? And she said it's actual cork. She said I found it from somebody on Etsy and you can look them up. And I did. And uh, back then, this is probably five years ago, four years ago, um, what I found was light cork, medium cork, dark cork, and black. And that was it. Though That was the extent of what I could see. And so I ordered a piece and I was blown away by how soft it was. I was expecting it to be rough like a cork board or um, like a wine cork. I thought it would be hard and stiff and it was not. So I immediately started sewing with it and playing with it and I fell in love. I did a lot of research and I found a company based in Portugal and that's where I ordered it from. So all of our cork is directly imported from Portugal. There, um, There is some cork I think I've heard in Italy and in Greece. I have never worked with it. I don't know if it's made the same, but Portugal is kind of where it all started. So that is where I get mine from. And the company that I work with, they're very reputable. And one of the things before you order anything, they ask you what you're doing with it. So in a minute, we're gonna look at some of the different um, uh, thicknesses of cork and some of the different things that you might find when you're shopping for cork. This company in particular, before I even um, bought anything, said, what are you making with it? Who are you selling it to? And they steered me towards the right one. So it is a, it's vegan, if you did not know that. It is fully sustainable. It is made from the bark of the cork oak tree. There is information on my website about this, a lot, a lot more details. Um, but it is a fully sustainable product. You can take the bark of the tree and it will regenerate. I get a lot of questions about um, the sustainability and people are being told that that's not true, that it's not a fully sustainable product, that actually we are killing cork trees and that's why uh, wine corks are now plastic and that is not true. Um, that is absolutely 100% not true. The reason that wine corks are plastic is because they're cheaper. Um, some wine companies still use cork, but the cork trees are not going away. It is definitely not harming or killing the trees. So. Um, let me see here. 
and it regenerates. So like I said, it's very, very easy to sew. And when I first got a piece of it, I didn't even think about changing anything on my machine. So I had been working on a quilt top or another bag. I didn't think about changing the needle, changing the foot. I didn't do anything different. I took the cork home, I cut it out for whatever I was making. I think I made a wallet out of it first. And I just started sewing with it and I was like, oh, I didn't even think, but this just went through my machine with no problems. It's not sticky like vinyl. I have a little piece of vinyl here. So vinyl is great, uh, faux leather, whichever you like to call it. Um, but it's great and I can give you a source for some good vinyl if you want it. It's where I got this from, but this it sticks. So I always have to use a Teflon foot and I'm very cautious, obviously around an iron, because if you put an iron on vinyl, it's going to melt. So I'm very cautious when I use that and I have to make a lot of changes. Cork, I don't. Um, also leather, another great thing that you can use in your bags, this gold lame. I have no idea why I bought this, but I just had to. It's very, um, Jane Fonda workout pants. I don't know. It's it's a weird one, but I, I bought it. But look how thick that is. Can you see? It's a thick piece of leather. It's going to hold up, but this is not going to go through my machine as easily as cork. And also, I am personally not a vegan, but I know a lot of people that are and would not want to use this because it's leather. And we all know where leather comes from. Um, cows. So, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> I got a lot of coffee today. So I do have some leather that I play with um, and I love leather, but it's very expensive. So we're kind of, cork is kind of in, in between. It's a little bit more than vinyl typically, but it's less than leather, but it's easier to sew than both of those. Um, so I, is there a question? I see that. I just don't know if I... Uh, straps, how do you make the straps thin? Um, I'm gonna loop back around to that. I'm going to come back to talking about how to use it. I want to talk about the court first, um, but I will, I'm keeping that up here. And if not, remind me again. So we're going to talk about straps actually here. I'll write it down. Okay. So when you are out shopping for cork, um, obviously I sell it. I tell you guys that all the time. It's on the website. Um, I don't wholesale it to shops. So a lot of the shops get it from distributors and in getting it from distributors, unfortunately they have not been educated a lot of the distributors that have patterns and hardware and um, and fabric and everything for quilt shops to buy from they jumped on a, on a bandwagon they jumped on the trend of cork and they didn't know exactly what they were buying and unfortunately all cork is not the same across the board what I sell here is the cork that I was told was best for bags you can see let me hold this up with the leather that is leather and that's the cork. So you can see it's still a substantial thickness, but it's nowhere near what the leather is. So when I'm sewing that, I'm not going to have the difficulties I would on some machines getting through this. This is made. It's not going to, you're not going to hurt it. I can iron it. Barb, watch me iron a piece before. You're not going to rip it. It has the tiniest little bit of stretch. I mean, teeny tiny. And a lot of that comes from the backing fabric. So it's, forgiving it's very holes. forgiving. Yes, thank you. Um, so this cork that I sell, this is made for bags. I did this entire Everly backpack out of cork, the whole outside. I don't ever use cork inside. Uh, that would be very, very weird and difficult to sew through, but I don't do that. But the cork that we sell is always the highest quality cork that you're going to buy. Some distributors have some of this, not the colors and the prints that we have, but they have some of this which means some of your local shops might have it. So you might be able to find something nice like this when you're shopping locally. But what you also will see out there is a couple of things that I just want you to be wary of. First of all, to all of my Amazon shoppers, and I am not knocking Amazon, I shop on Amazon a lot. Maybe don't buy cork on Amazon though, because here is the thing. I had a lecture a couple months ago uh, before all this chaos started, and I bought a bunch of cork on Amazon because I wanted to see what I was getting. And this is one of the pieces of cork that I bought. Can you see how thin that is? It's like paper. And that's what the backing is. But here's the other thing. It's not cork. Uh, when this came in, I was not home. And my husband said, one of your cork packages came in from Amazon. And he sent me a picture of it. And on the outside of the bag, it said PU. And PU, not PU. PU stands for polyurethane. 
this is not cork. This is uh, plastic that's made to look like cork that is thin like paper. So be very wary that not all cork is actual cork. This is not. One of the other things that you will see, and it's too bad because this is cute. I think that's adorable, but it's not cork. One of the other things that you will see if you go to some of your local shops, because I know one of the distributors sells this, is a thin, thin paper thin cork. It's not that it isn't real cork. It's actual cork. I have a piece of it. Let me show you this one. I have a piece of it here. This is actual cork. Um, I can't. I can rip this one because it's still really thin. If I hold it up to the light, it's very see-through. You can see my hand moving back there. This is actual cork. Um, it does come, I believe, from Portugal, but this is not gonna hold up on a bag as long as the cork that we sell is. The cork that we have, which is a lot thicker, is not the same as this. So don't be mad at your local quilt shops. They're learning, this is a process, and they have not getting getting they have not been given a full education on this because the people selling it don't always know this is great for little projects if you want to make like a little you know a little coaster or you make a little tiny wallet or a business card holder a notebook cover this is fine for that but if you are putting this on a bag like this where you're going to be using these handles all the time and touching it and you know you wearability on the corners it's just not going to do the same so just kind of be aware of the thickness. That's the number one thing I look for is how thick is the cork? How soft is it? Will it rip? Can I rip this? And I can't. You know, it should have a teeny tiny bit of stretch, but not much. And the backing is a poly cotton backing. So this one's a little fuzzy. Some of them are not as fuzzy. I don't know why. I have no explanation for that. This is also the fabric backing. This is the emerald color. I love this color. I feel like it doesn't get as much attention it's so pretty uh, but this is definitely good cork um, I just saw a question how do you clean the cork um, you can hand wash the cork you can wipe it clean you can use warm soapy water I've had people tell me they use baby wipes on it you have to remember that the cork is very durable it's it's grown outside you're not gonna do a lot that's gonna hurt it I iron the cork I get a lot of people that are like what do you mean iron or how do you finish that if you can't iron the cork don't iron this cork because this is what happens. That's what I iron that. You can iron our cork. I iron it all the time. All of these samples have had an iron on it. It's a hot iron. But when you're cleaning it, um, I just kind of will wipe it clean. I'll hand wash it. Um, my husband is a mechanic. <laughs> um, everything, yeah, of course he's watching. <laughs> Hi, honey. Um, everything that we have has grease and dirt on it because it's just, it's the life we live. Uh, my office is off of his repair shop I had a little pouch that I had carried for a very very long time and it was the natural color cork and it didn't stain but it got a little bit darker it kind of aged and because of my hands being dirty and the oils and the greases and stuff it kind of got gross so I threw it in the washing machine I just wanted to know what would happen it's not something I would ever do to any of the bags that have hardware I'm ignoring him um <laughs> I could reply <laughs> don't don't ignore him um, I just wanted to see what would happen. I wanted to know if it would fall apart because I wanted to tell you if it would. I threw it in the washing machine with a load of laundry. I threw it in the hot dryer. It came out fine. Again, I am not recommending that anybody does that, but I'm just saying if I can wash it in a washing machine, you hand washing it, you're not going to hurt it. Uh, the lining fabric did not look so great. It had pen marks on it that never came out, but the cork looked really nice and it actually got a little bit softer. And I wish I had that piece here to show you. Um, the next time I'm at a show, I'll have it and you can touch it and you can feel how soft it is. So that was kind of the basics of what to look for when you're buying cork. Let me go back. Karen had asked about straps um, and in sewing the straps. So I think, okay, this strap right here, this is a Harper bag. This has interfacing on it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, that white background. I interface this strap and at most of my handles not all of them and I'll tell you which ones most of my handles I interface and the reason is this is two layers of cork so all I do is I just fold it in half like that I stitch here I stitch here I make my handle 
You can also fold it in towards the center if you'd rather that your seam was in the middle. It really doesn't make any difference at all because the raw edges, it won't fray. But I like to interface my handles because I like that it adds a little bit of stiffness and a little durability to the handles. The cork by itself, when it's just um, folded for a handle like this, to me doesn't feel substantial enough. I want a little bit more. So I interface it with decor bond. Obviously the decor bond, which is fusible, if you put the iron on this side, you're not gonna get enough heat through. So I iron on the um, interfacing side. I don't normally recommend that you do that on cotton because of the shrinking, but on the cork, it's fine. But I will tell you in the pattern if I recommend that you do it or not. When I'm making a handle like this, <clears throat> this is the Lucy bag. When I make this handle, this is an inch wide and it's a, an adjustable handle. So it's looping around a few times. This one, because most of the time when I'm using it, it's gonna be, I'm gonna be using two layers of the handle. I don't interface this. On such a small piece, I find that it's fine. On something that is by itself, that has hardware, I do like to interface it. Uh, the Abby bag, the one that I showed you last week, I interfaced it and on this, on the uh, getaway bag, these are interfaced. And you can see on here, because this is the beige background, that's my raw edge right there. It's not fraying. Anything that you're seeing is a little bit of the fabric. I can just cut that with scissors. And excuse me, that's the folded edge. So when you're making your handles, they're nice and thin. They go through the machine, even with interfacing in it, it goes through really nicely, but it just gives it a little extra something. Um, also, if I do a rolled handle, I don't interface that because I have to fold that in half again and, um, and sew that. So I try to just make it easy on my machine and easy on me. Um, Barb also mentioned, and I love, I love this fact about cork. If you make a mistake, if you sew, and I do this a lot where I don't like my top stitching or I sewed something and it's not quite the way I want it to be. If you rip the stitching out and run your iron over the cork, it makes the holes go away. And any of the holes that are still showing, it kind of hides it in the texture. And all of these have texture, even the smooth ones with color. So I find that if I'm not happy with something and I rip it out, that I can go back in, sew it again, I iron it, and it just kind of makes it new again, and it doesn't leave holes. Where if you're sewing leather or vinyl and you put a hole in this, you can't iron it and you're gonna see the hole. And usually with these, I'm using a size 90 needle, it's thick, so it's gonna leave a large hole. Um, which also brings me to needle size. I get asked all the time, what size needle do you use? What kind of thread do you use? What kind of foot do you use? And um, I use Orifil 50 weight cotton on everything. I piece with it, I top stitch the bag, the cork, everything. Um, I use uh, usually an 80 needle. Sometimes I'll have a 90, like I recommended for you guys on the boxy pouches because of the edge where it's thick with the zipper. And I use my regular foot because it doesn't stick. Um, what was the, I saw a question. Oh, it was a comment. Oh, a, two comments. Oh, here we go. I cut my one inch straps four inches wide, nice and strong, but before I had my dookie, I couldn't do yes. that. Yes, so um, Janet, absolutely. So here's the thing, when you're making a fabric handle, and I have no fabric handles here, um, I always fold them in half four times. Um, I had one. No, it's okay. It's okay. So if I'm making a fabric handle and it's interface, I would cut a one inch handle four inches. I fold it and I fold it again. And that keeps all the raw edges away. When it comes to cork, unless you have a Juki or a Janome Industrial or one of the commercial machines, four layers of cork is going to be a little bit tough to sew through. Some of your machines will get through it with the right needle and the right person behind the machine. I hate to say that, but sometimes our machines are a little resistant and we just have to tell them what to do. But four layers of cork can get a little cumbersome on a handle. That's a lot of thickness. I think that a lot of machines will go through this, but a lot of machines will not. So that's why I just do the two layers. I just fold it in half. This raw edge is not gonna hurt anything. Um, and the folding to the middle or folding to the outside, it's a personal choice. I always used to fold to the middle, like this one. I always folded here, that way I had a nice clean handle outside. But I fold it in half now because it's actually easier. Janet's saying she needs cork handles. I never make fabric handles 
Never make fatal Oh, now that I've enabled you, enabled you with cork. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I all my cork handles are two layers thick. Um, they're very, very durable and just like this. So, yes, I am an enabler. That is that is why I'm here. Um, let me Kim think. also said you love all fabric and colors. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So I did bring some of the cork over so I can just show you some of the colors here. Uh, we do have, and I did lose count, I think we're in the 70 to 80 range for colors uh, and prints, but these are some of the ones that we have. And sometimes it's just nice to see them in person. This is what is on the hummingbird bag that I just showed you. There's the mustard, the green, the emerald. I love the emerald green. Um, we have, this is the textured natural. And then this is the natural with gold. So another thing I wanted to talk to you about when it comes to ironing. When you are using something like this, where the metallic is embedded, it's not on the surface, it's kind of in here, versus this, don't iron this. Do not, this is the unicorn tears. It is the most obnoxious thing that I own. Don't iron this on the front. Um, iron it on the back, that's fine. You're gonna have creases in it when we ship it because we do ship it folded. If you iron the front, it turns white and it looks like plastic. And ask me how I know that. Uh, so I did the research for you. So don't iron anything that has a, a metallic on top. Anything where the metallic is kind of embedded is totally fine. There's also pearlized. You can, this is the pearl teal. You can definitely iron this one. And this is the sapphire. This is what's used on the Abbey kit. The sapphire that has the metallic kind of embedded in that. That's totally fine. Just be cautious with um, anything that has metallic on top. Here's some more colors just to kind of show you. This is one of our exclusive colors, the lime green. I love that one. Sharon wants to know, is the cork on the bolt or only sheets? Uh, that's a good question. So the cork comes to us on gigantic rolls. They're, real, they're like 100 pounds. I have a contraption made by my husband because he's good like that to cut it. But we have all of it cut. We don't sell yardage of it. And the reason is a couple of things. Number one, it's a nightmare to try to ship anything bigger than the biggest piece that we have. It just gets too big for boxes. It's hard to fold it or roll it. Um, the other reason is cork is expensive. And so a yard of cork would be about $96. It's just a lot. The largest that we sell is 18 by 54. And any bag pattern that I have, 18 by 54 is the maximum you would ever ever need for anything um, unless you wanted to do an entire huge bag out of cork which um, that would just be a very pricey thing to do it's doable but we sell 9 by 12 which is here all the way up to 18 by 54 um, so we sell per piece not per yard and that's something else I'm glad that you asked that question because I also wanted to bring that up when it comes to pricing Cork is not across the board a set price. Like if you go into a quilt shop, you know that you're gonna find on average fabric to be in the 11 to $12 range. That's about what it is right now for good quality cotton fabric. Cork, however, is not really set. And I want you to be very wary of what you're buying and what you're paying for because I have price compared a lot of people that are selling cork. And what it will happen is they will sell you a half yard of cork. But what they call a half yard is 18 by 27. What I call a half yard is 18 by 54. So they're selling you half the piece that I would sell you and they're calling it a half yard. That is why we don't use yardage terms. If somebody says I need a quarter yard, I don't do quarter yards. I, I ask what the project is and what size you need. And for any of my projects, like I said, I cut these and pick these sizes. There's five sizes specifically for what we do so that it works with all of them so if you are trying to if you're trying to tra um, translate from fabric to cork the yardage is not going to be the same and you really need to know the size piece that you need and i just noticed that as it was getting more popular at shows and more popular in shops that i would look at something and i would say their half yard their half yard is the same as what i call a fat quarter but they're actually the same size, just different verbiage. So I personally, and nobody that works at our in our shows calls it by the yard, we call it by the piece. So I hope that makes sense, but just kind of be aware. 
Um, sometimes you'll see in quilt shops that they're rolled and they're wrapped up and it'll say yard of cork but the yard is 36 by like 27. Just be aware of the size of the piece that you're buying and not the yardage. Ann Gerard has a question. Yes. A few years ago, the cork I purchased was top, not top quality. However, it is thick and has the cotton poly on the back. As you mentioned, it shows wear on the corners just after a month. Have you any suggestions for me? Any projects would work best? Um. So, I have found that on, and, let me start here. I'm just trying to process this question. I always judge cork first by thickness. And like I said to you, you wanna be just a little bit more cautious on the thin. Ours is on the thicker side. So for something like this to wear that quickly, the only thing that I can think is that there's possibly a defect in that piece of cork, which is unfortunate, but it's something that we wouldn't know before it was sold. Um, and it could also be the particular project. Um, what I found, and I don't know what bag you're making or how you finished it. On box corners like this, I always tell you in the pattern, be really careful when you're cutting these because when you cut squares, you don't wanna to cut too far in, like into here and get a tear. If you were using cork, and I did do this on one of my bags by accident, I was hurrying, which I shouldn't do. I overcut this right here. That little tear right there, which was, it was minuscule and you couldn't even see it. That was what started to wear because it was kind of hanging out on the bottom of the bag. This, I have not found that I've had any issues with. Would you grab my purse for me that's on my chair? I, was I am not careful. I am not, I, I, don't, I care, I've been carrying this bag for about a year. It's loaded with junk. Oh my God, my back. <laughs> Bar just got a hernia. Um, but this is my bag. And there's my corners and it's heavy it's very heavy <laughs> and those are my corners and they have some wear and tear a little bit of wear and tear there from a year and I am one of those people that does not hang my bag up I don't set it down nicely I drop it on the floor if I'm at a restaurant it's probably covered in a lot of germs I just throw it wherever um, so I would say after a year, yeah, you're gonna get a little bit of wear and tear. It's not titanium, it's not gonna hold up forever, but leather and vinyl wear the same way. So the only thing that I can think, and I think that was Anne that asked that question, mm -hmm. um, is that possibly it was a defect or possibly there was a small cut that maybe was not noticed. Um, that's really the only thing I can think of. I have not dealt with that except by my own errors. So I can't think of any other reason why that would happen. I can remember in the very beginning when we were ordering cork, one color came in and it was so heavy. Like, do you remember? It was the gray, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It felt like, it felt like a piece of leather. And mm. I was like, what is going on with this? Something had happened in the manufacturing and they accidentally sent us something that was too thick. We still used it, but it was just one of those, they might've been working out a new tool, a new system, something. So I think that every so often, and it happens with hardware. It happens with spools of thread. I've had spools of thread that will just fall apart and I'm like, but this is high quality thread. So that's really the only thing that I can possibly think of. I hope that answered your question. I'm not sure if it did, but it's just one of those things. And it is still kind of a new thing. So it could have been something being worked out. It might've been, from a different country. It could have been another quality of cork that uh, looked good on the outside, but maybe had some, some technical flaws to it. Um, and yes, Peggy, you are absolutely right. I Oh, you are watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> buying cork is addicting, I know. Mm -hmm. um, when we first started buying cork, I was in the office across the hall, which is now my husband's. It was, I guess, always my husband's. And uh, we had just enough cork, we would pile colors on top of each other. We now have so much cork that they all have their own shelf and we're still running out of room <laughs> mm -hmm. because we love cork. We're addicted to it too. So, um, so Chicky, let's see. Chicky says, hi, Jessica. I love hi. the cork I bought from you in Houston. I've made a few handbags with some of your cork awesome. and even made a wallet that I absolutely love. Cool. Thanks for selling great products and your purse hardware is high quality too. Well, thanks, Chicky. Thank you for that. Um, oh, and Penny, a uh, tourist tote bag. Yeah. yeah, so I don't, I don't think that it's anything that anyone's ever done wrong on that. I think it's just, you know, possibly just not a good piece. And like I've said a lot with uh, with our hardware, sometimes things happen that I we can't tell until it's being used. So it could have just been a defect. So I hope that that answered your question. Um, I If I had a better answer, if I had a definite answer, I would definitely tell you. 
Um, I want to show you a couple of prints and then if you guys have any more questions, let us know. We'll probably wrap this up in a minute here because I have been babbling for 50 minutes. That's a shock to most of you, I know. Um, so here are some of the prints just to kind of show you the zebra. Anybody else into animal prints right now? It's my new obsession. Uh, zebra and leopard. This one. Oh, do not be afraid. No, don't be too chicken. Jump right in. <laughs> One. This is one of our exclusive prints, the rainbow triangles. This is the rainbow flowers, pineapples. How, Karen wants to, how do you suggest putting in RFID fabric in a oh, wallet? Oh, um, no? RFID fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, the best answer that I can give for RFID fabric, um, can you hand me that diva right there? If you can reach it. I don't personally use RFID fabric. Um, it's one of those things that I just haven't personally done enough research to feel comfortable. Plus, all of the things I make are generally samples, so there's nothing to steal here. And I always say, if you want to steal my identity, you get a husband who's always got dirty hands and three dogs. So, by all means, if you want my identity, you can have it. But, it's not a laughing matter. I do know that. Um, if I am making... This is the one we were playing with that doesn't have screws in it. If I'm making a wallet regardless if it has cork or if it's all fabric and I'm gonna put RFID fabric in it. I want to protect everything in here. I don't wanna just protect this area. So I would probably put it in between these layers here. That would probably be what I would do. So behind my interface or behind my lining fabric and between the cork or the outside fabric, I would probably just put a layer there. It would cover the entire wallet and protect all of that. Um, do we have cheetah? Yes, we do. It's, um, I don't have a piece of it in front of me, but yes, we have the leopard print. You want to grab leopard? I love the leopard print. Um, animal prints with zebra and we have the leopard print. Um, so, but as of right now, and I mentioned this, I know in our first Facebook live, which was a few weeks ago, as of right now, I am replenishing and keeping stock, but I'm not getting a lot of new stuff in for the moment, just because of these weird times that we're dealing with. There's the leopard print, so you can see the scale of it. It works nice for wallets and um, purses because it's not a huge, huge print. The zebra is a little, a little bit bigger, but still is not too big if you wanted to put it like on a wallet. It would work on a wallet. So those are the animal prints that we have. Um, but as of right now, um, I am not getting in a lot of new cork uh, unless anything changes in the near future. Um, other than that, I'm just kind of trying to replenish. Um, I'm not sure what that question means, Lori. If you would ask, a, if you, I'm not sure what LFD means. Um, if you want to let me know, I'll oh. answer that. Um, you're ordering today even as a chicken. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, don't be afraid because the cork is, it's easy to sew through. I know that it's a little bit on the pricier side, so it's nerve wracking that you don't want to cut it and do something wrong, but just try it. Try something simple. Something like this where you're just using it on the outside where it's the last piece that you're going to work with. Um, try something like that instead of jumping all the way in. You don't have to do an entire bag. You can use it as an accent. The, um, excuse me, uh, the Kaylee bag. You could do this out of fabric and you could just do a piece in the middle. The nine by 12 piece of cork will do a lot of things. You could even try a little keychain. Um, oh, the, like the RFID, yes. Um, I think that's what she means, the RFID fabric. Um, sorry, I'm distracted again. But you know, try something small, try something simple. And I know I showed you this, but I didn't really talk much about it. The embroidery, if you have a machine that embroiders, absolutely by all means you can embroider cork and i will tell you that i am <laughs> i am still new to embroidery i've had an embroidery machine for about a year and a half or so so i know little to nothing about embroidery and if i can do it then all of you seasoned you know professionals that embroider can do it i did not do anything special to this i used my orophil cotton thread and i just put this on a piece of um what is it called? Uh, the stabilizer that I used. It's a tear away self stick. Um, I think it's Floriani, Floriani perfect stick. So you don't have to baste anything. I just hooped that, peeled the paper off, stuck the cork on and just went to town. Um, even though this is a pretty dense design, 
it didn't tear I didn't have any issues even with these little flowers right here I wouldn't go super small and dense if you're gonna go dense I would make sure it's a big design uh, but it embroiders really nicely and I think that's about it that's a uh, cork 101 so um, a couple things and we'll wrap this up because I know I've been talking for a while now if you have any more questions feel free to email me or you can add them in the comments I do check the comments after the videos are up um, if you have any questions about cork about colors about anything let us know um, we are still shipping three days a week uh, we have lots of cork still in stock I have the new kits up on the website don't forget your show and tell post some pictures in the comments so we can all see what you're working on and let's do that every week I think that would be fun to see what everyone's been making I don't know what we're gonna talk about next week but I will let you know as soon as I figure that out and I think that's it so have a great weekend I will see you guys on Friday